Hey guys, welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. Today we're looking at drive shaft angles and what's good, what's bad, and what needs changed right now. The dog's eating stuff in the driveway and the Jeep is ready for some work. Today's episode is sponsored by Air Tools, which is not a company but a thing. Because it's the first time I'm actually going to get to use Air Tools on camera since I got an air compressor. So, pretty excited for that. Alright you guys, let's jump right on into it. What we've got here is my drive shaft. And you can see that my transfer case up here is straight like such. But my axle back here is angled like such. Well, if I draw a straight line for uh, my transfer case and I draw an angled line for my axle, I've got these angles. And that's an angle that is different. I'm not supposed to have a difference in these angles. Because you'll see in the video that I have linked down below, which is drive line angles and phasing, that this is a really, really bad deal. And I'll talk to you more about how I got it this way, but first we need to fix this because this is bad. Essentially what happened here was I installed a lift kit on this Jeep and it came and you can maybe see it over there. You'll see them in real close in a minute, but you can see there's a little spacer over there. It came with these wedges and I thought that if I turned my axle up that I would end up helping because, you know, a little bit of lift kit is going to droop this down, increase the angle of this drive shaft. And I thought if I turn this up, I'm going to decrease some of the stress on there. Well, as you'll see in the video, like I mentioned before, that's linked below, when this is spinning at a constant velocity, goes on an angle here, it's going to spin this and what I'll call an ovular velocity. So it's going to be slow than fast and slow than fast along its revolution. And if this were parallel to this guy up here, that angle difference is going to cancel out and we'll get smooth motion back here. But since I didn't do that, what I'm getting is that slow, fast, slow, fast is being transmitted into my transfer case. And that's really, really bad. And I've been driving it like this for a couple years now. And I have noticed some shutter or movement going on when I start to accelerate. And that's probably what's going on. So now that I'm older and wiser, we're going to fix this as fast as we can and not drive on it that way anymore. We've got a shim right here, and this is at a slight angle. Hopefully it's roughly the slight angle that's causing this issues. Because basically what happened was I got my lift kit and they sent me two sets of front springs and one set of rear springs. The front springs had this angle. This is for the uh, steering to be correct or whatever with the amount of change that this lift kit was giving it. And I thought to myself, well, I'll sell the rear springs. I'll keep the second set of front springs use that little shim to help me out. And that was a really bad idea. Shows a little bit of uh, <laughs> my learning curve and you know how I'm growing as we go along. So like I said, I saw that the drive shaft angle is not good. It was actually an Instagram post talking about drive shaft angles. And I'm like, hey, that's mine. And it said that was the worst case scenario. So we're gonna fix that today. How this is gonna work is we're taking these U-bolts off here and down here. And so those are going to come off and then the axle, we're going to lift it up with a jack of some kind, pick that up. And then there's just one bolt in here to take this shim out. So this is a good video if you need to know how to remove shims or put shims in or however you want to do it. But this will show you kind of the nuts and bolts, if you will. Alrighty, so that's the bottom plate. Here's your U-bolts. Gonna wanna kinda keep those all together. Like I said before, we're gonna lift up this axle and then we are going to put a jack stand under it, hold it in place. We should be able to get to the top of this bolt. You can see the bolt here, it's got a top to it we gotta get to. This part's pretty simple. You just lift up that axle and it'll bring the spring with it, but eventually, there you go. We'll get all nice and separated. All 
Okay, this next part is kind of on conjecture, but I'm going to take a clamp and actually clamp the leaves together because I can't remember if they want to separate. There's no load on them right now, but they might still want to separate a little bit. And I, I would hate to have to put these back together. So we're going to put a C-clamp on here. Nice and tight so there's no funny business. You've got yourself a 5 8 bolt. Since this wants to throw a lot of rust in my eyes, we'll get some safety glasses in here too. Okay, now you can see that I'm spinning that shim. Well, there is a uh, like a flathead screw on the top of here that we're gonna have to hold while we take off the rest. Okay, there she goes. Aw, oh, man. Didn't think about the bolt being long. Lift the axle out of the way just a little bit more. And there she goes. All right, we got ourselves this little shim plate here. You can see that angle I was talking about before. Skinny on one side, fat on the other. Now I'm going to try and get this bolt out of here because, well, she's kind of stuck in there. And there you go. There's that little bolt. That's all she is, but it's important because this diameter here fits very nicely into the axle. So I was thinking if I couldn't get this out, I'd have to use a different bolt, but that wouldn't work because the hex head wouldn't fit in there. I'd have to actually create one of these on the grinder. Don't want to do that. Luckily, came out no problem. Anyway, here's that shim. Really useful for correcting steering geometry. Uh, actually, it'd be fairly useful for correcting this, too, if taking it out isn't enough. But I'm thinking that taking it out should be enough. Yeah. Alrighty, let's put this bad boy back together. Guy goes in there. Because that flathead wasn't working out so well, we're going to actually hold that with some pliers. Now that's on there real tight. Forms that I'm reading are making a pretty good claim that this bolt here doesn't have a torque spec because once we get those U-bolts back on, they're going to kind of cinch this whole assembly back together anyway. So they say just put it on real nice and tight. That's real nice and tight. Now we can remove the C-clamp and actually put the axle back down. Now this shouldn't come as too much of a surprise to you that the axle didn't just sit right on that pin again because we got the shock in here. If you want to make life easier for yourself, you can take that shock off. I'm just going to kind of wrestle with it. Um, but yeah, so it's not entirely centered. The leaf spring kind of flexed, or not really flexed, but relaxed outward and the axle kind of moved backwards as a result of the shock. So. It's not the most fun you can have, but it'll work. Another thing that helps out is if you actually apply a little bit of pressure to that spring and lift it up to where that axle is going to want to be. So now you got this some force pushing you up. So once you get it in place, it should really lock in. Oh, ha, here I am messing with it. It's already in. All right, so you can see that the axle is at a slight angle. Well, that's because I haven't done the other side yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the U-bolts in here. I'm going to snug them down just a little bit, not real crazy tight, just enough to hold it in place. And then when I do the other side, I'll come back and I'll torque everything down. Now, normally when I'm doing stuff like this and we're taking rusty parts off, I like to freshen them up a little bit, maybe take some of the rust off and give it a nice coat of paint. I'm not 100% confident the paint's going to dry in enough time because I want to get this thing moving, but we'll give it a shot.
No. It's dead. Go with self etching instead. Farm paint. She is all painted up. You can see that right here. Oh yeah, and sees. So what I did is I put the nuts back on the U-bolts and I screwed it up there with a torque gun. Uh, I put some anti seize on there so that way I can get it off on a later date. And yeah, so now we need to torque this down with a torque wrench accurately to 90 foot-pounds. It's pretty important that these are torqued to spec. These hold up the weight of your car. So very important. Also, some conventional wisdom tells me that you should replace the U-bolts every time you take them out because when you're torquing them, you are stretching the bolts a little bit. I also read that it's actually the threads that you are mangling. There's the word I'll use, mangling. And because I took a spacer out of here, I'm actually contacting different threads and mostly I just don't have other U-bolts. So we're gonna run with these ones on here. This is a fairly light vehicle undergoing light loads but that's really no excuse so if you have the means to get new u-bolts you probably should but if not just take precaution and know what you're dealing with just a friendly reminder when you're putting this whole wheel guy back on here you're going at a hundred foot pounds on your torque wrench and you're doing so in a star pattern so that way these wheels stay on the car which is really great also, if you're all jacked up like I am, probably smart to block the tire. I did so with a block of wood, stuck my foot in there, making sure when I'm twisting this guy, I'm not rolling the vehicle forward off my jack stands. That would be a bad day. Check it out. The shims are gone, and these are at a much more favorable angle. That guy is basically parallel to the ground, maybe pointed up just a slight bit, and he's parallel to the ground. This should perform a lot better. It's still a pretty steep angle, but hey, short wheelbase Jeeps, what are you gonna do? Hey you guys, it's me laying on the floor. Hey, if you liked this video, I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, there's a bell next to it. If you ring the bell, you get notified of my videos. I do a lot of these. There's one every single week, so you should totally hit that bell. Also, if you like all Jeep content all the time, I also post a few videos on the Gone Jeepin, Gone GPN YouTube channel. You're going to want to check them out. They're a really cool group. That is it for today. I hope this was helpful. If I don't see you, have a great day. Bye.